welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. If you clicked on this video today because it said hermeneutics or rightly dividing the word of God, that means one of a couple things. One is that you already have really strong opinions about that and exactly how we should go about dividing the word of God. If you're looking for some sort of definitive answer to defend yourself against your senior pastor or your fellow believers, you're probably looking in the wrong place. The second thing you might have clicked is because you really don't know what that means and exactly how you can interpret and read the word yourself. If that's why you clicked on it today, then you're definitely in the right place. Now, if you fall in between those things, I would encourage you to stick around. We got some interesting stuff to talk about today. To start off, I thought we'd share a couple famous quotes and how you might try um, to divide them up before we look at the word of God. And the first one is from your friend and mine, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, who can forget that from U.S. history class, right? And on top of that, um, there was this famous speech, uh, the inaugural speech, actually, of uh, Bill Clinton, the President of the United States, just a few years back. And if you remember, he said, yeah, yeah, interesting stuff, right? And uh, now as I throw those quotes up, you probably figured out by this point that they're not exactly true, right? Not saying that those men never said those things. What I am saying is that's not the kind of thing that they've put out for you to divide, for you to learn from. And so because of it, I think it's important to see what the Bible says about itself, not what Lincoln said about himself or Clinton said about the rest of the world. I think it's more important for us to see what the Bible actually says. So we're in 2 Timothy today, chapter 2, starting at verse 14. Just a couple quick things we'll pull out of it. It says this, remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words, which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. This is important because as a teacher of the Bible and as a hearer and listener and learner of the Bible, you can get into debates about exactly what a specific word means and how you break that down. If you pick the wrong word and run with it, if you pick a word and divide it improperly, it can twist everything you do for the rest of your life, theologically and spiritually and emotionally, financially, relationally. If you choose to focus on the wrong word. Also, Paul writing to Timothy does claim that this only leads to arguments between believers. He goes on in verse 15 and he says, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth. And I think that is the key, accurately handling the word of truth. What that means is when you read something in the Bible and you don't necessarily like it or you don't necessarily agree with it or that doesn't fit with your worldview or your cultural view, we cannot, we must not, we're implored not to throw it away. We must accurately handle that word of truth. He goes on and he says, but avoid worldly and empty chatter for it will lead to further ungodliness and their talk will spread like gangrene among all of them are Hanaeus and uh, Philetus. Now, he t mentions a couple specific people here and saying that empty chatter, discussion and argument for the sake of discussion and argument is going to spread like gangrene. It's the kind of thing you can't get out of your spiritual community or out of your family or frankly out of your friend group, your individual mind. Once that sets in and you've gotten into these theological loops where you just want to break things down and break things down and argue things and argue things and it becomes meaningless chatter, for the sake of argumentation. It is going to spread. We must be very cautious. He then ends in verse 18. He says, men who've gone astray from the truth saying that the resurrection has already taken place and they have upset the faith of some. Now here, Paul very specifically points out something that is happening in Timothy's church, which is there were believers who were saying, not only do they went ahead and they believed that Christ was the way, the truth, the life, they got salvation through him. They believed he bridged the gap um, between sin and the father, all that justification stuff, they bought into all of it. 
but they added the fact that they believe that Christ had already come back, second coming had already happened, and led a whole bunch of believers to follow with that. If you find yourself in a place where you're the leader of men and women in your church, in your family, in your place of work, it is important to realize that you can lead people astray if you are not careful making sure that you are rightly dividing the Word of God. It's something I'm very passionate about. And if you have a piece of scripture that you are not quite sure how you need to divide it, how you need to apply it, feel free to put it in the comments down below. I would love to engage with you that way. Well, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget, there's a notification bell there. If you hit that notification bell, you'll know every time I upload another weekly devotion. God bless. I'll see you next week. Be encouraged. Thank you.